Hi everybody, my name is Ryan, and if you're anything like me growing up with an interest in fossil mammals in the early 2000s, you probably learned about dire wolves at some point. The books I had, along with pop culture depictions and even some documentaries, made these animals out to be basically grey wolves on steroids. They were huge, hulking beasts, twice the size of their grey wolf cousins, capable of taking down all the biggest prey animals of Ice Age North America. But in the last five years, our view on dire wolves has changed quite a bit thanks to closer examination of their anatomy and new studies into their genetics. First of all, they were definitely big, but not nearly as big as pop culture would have you believe. And secondly, it turns out they weren't even closely related to grey wolves at all. So what was it about these wolves that made them so dire? And if they were so powerful, why did they go extinct? Dire wolves are an extinct species of canid that lived throughout the Americas during the Pleistocene Epoch from around 250,000 years ago to around 10,000 years ago. Their range extended all the way from northern Alaska down to southern Mexico. The first dire wolf fossils were found by scientists in the 1850s in Indiana from the Ohio River, and were officially named Canis dearis by paleontologist Joseph Leedy. Due to their superficial skeletal similarities, it was believed that this new species of canid must be a close cousin to grey wolves, but their more robust anatomy meant that they must have specialized in much larger prey. Modern grey wolves stand at around 30 inches or 76.2 centimeters at shoulder height while direwolf skeletons show that they averaged at around 38 inches or 96.5 centimeters at the shoulder, which is also believed to be close to the maximum size able to be reached by grey wolves. Dire wolves were also 25% heavier than grey wolves with much more robust skulls and leg bones for tackling larger prey like longhorned bison, wild horses, camels, and possibly even young mammoths and mastodons. Looking at their skeletons side by side, it's easy to see how scientists originally believed that these two canids were closely related to the point of being considered sister species to each other. In 2021, archaeologist Dr. Angela Perry, whose work focuses primarily on prehistoric humans and their relationship with the animals and environments they lived alongside, led a study to see how dire wolves fit into the narrative of early humans and dogs in North America. This study was the first time that a full genome was sequenced from a dire wolf found at the La Brea Tar Pits. And after closely comparing the DNA of five individual dire wolves from across the United States, and then comparing them with the DNA of living canids like grey wolves, coyotes, jackals, and doles, it was discovered that the DNA of dire wolves stood out as being totally distinct from other canid species. The results of this study concluded that dire wolves are a uniquely new world lineage that diverged from the ancestors of grey wolves which evolved in Eurasia more than five million years ago. Because of this, scientists have placed dire wolves into their own genus. Rather than Canis dearis, they are now known as Enocyon dearis. Their superficial similarities to grey wolves are a case of convergent evolution, which occurs when two unrelated species evolve similar body plans and lifestyles for similar habitats as each other. The DNA analysis also revealed that the coats of dire wolves may have actually been redder than we thought. Whether they were bright red, like red foxes and maned wolves or not, is unknown, but the fact that we know even a little about their outward physical appearance is more than we can say for the vast majority of fossil mammals. So, if dire wolves were such powerful predators and so well suited for the distinct environment they evolved in, then why did they go extinct at the end of the last ice age? This is a question that has long been debated, and there's no one clear answer. Some theories suggest that they died out because of the large animals they relied on for food were also going extinct around this time, and they were outcompeted by grey wolves who were more capable of hunting smaller prey. Another theory suggests that their extinction had to do with the climate changing as the earth started to become warmer, and still others suggest that the first humans to enter North America played a part in driving dire wolves and other megafauna to extinction. Whatever the case may be, all we have left of these magnificent animals is their bones, which give us a tantalizing glimpse into what the world was like when our ancestors shared it with creatures that we can only ever dream of seeing. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep making more videos like this. Until next time, stay creative and stay curious.